Oh, uh, hey, Goulash here, and welcome to another episode of... The Gulag. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering a found footage horror film from 2012 called The Bay. Which is about a small town in Chesapeake Bay, which gets infected on the 4th of July by some sort of plague. Or is it a plague? Or is it not a plague? I guess watch the movie to find out. This is the first time I am speaking publicly about the disaster that happened. I was there. Now, the film is supposedly compiled of footage confiscated by the U.S. government, and all of the horrifying events depicted in the footage have something to do with a desalinization plant in the area. Now, the interesting thing about the film is the multiple perspectives depicted during the 4th of July. You see what happens with the police, the mayor, regular citizens, even outsiders who visit the town during the celebration that goes terribly wrong. Now, the narrative is very loose. There is a frame story involving an amateur newscaster's account of the incident. Her name is Donna Thompson, but mostly the film is about the loose perspectives during it. And Donna Thompson is kind of just a narrator for most of it. She doesn't really have that much influence on the plot. Every time I watch these FaceTime videos, it makes me feel sad. Her perspective is pretty limited, but it does help establish all the other characters and events that happen. Now, the interesting thing about how the story is told is that it feels like an old epistolary horror novel like Dracula with multiple different styles of narrative, like blog posts, police cams, Skype calls, text messages. It's very experimental. It's very daring. It's something that you don't really see that often, it's even with found footage. Usually it is literally just found footage with one limited perspective, but this is multiple perspectives. And across all these perspectives, you piece together a greater narrative and discover what's going on slowly but surely, building up the mystery. Now with these multiple perspectives, the film thoroughly explores every aspect of the town's experience during this crisis. It's very interesting to see how all these different people connect to each other and are changed by these events and how these stories intersect in certain ways. It's something I have never seen in a found footage film before. At the same time though, the characters feel kind of thin. There's a lot of characters, so there's not a lot of time to spend with them. It feels kind of like they're all just sort of one amorphous character. There, it's just not, there's just not enough time. The only really standout characters are Donna Thompson and the mayor. Other characters like a doctor have some screen time and some story to them, but they're just not all that interesting and there's not a lot of pathos to their stories, even though they're dealing with all these people dying around them, their, their friends and family. There's just not a lot of time to really reflect on that. It's missing that deeper personal connection. And on top of that, the acting is kind of wooden and unemotional a lot of the time, especially Donna Thompson's actress. She's not that great. Like, I guess she could be said to have been uh, desensitized to the events, but they could have done a lot more. They could have made her more of a, a mercenary sort of newscaster who's trying to get a story at all costs, but she just feels really bland, unfortunately, because she's the character we spend most of the time with. And the, the, the pain in the people's voices, I could hear them. They were like cries or like cries for help. But you didn't know where anyone was? No. I had no idea where anybody was. And ultimately, Donna Thompson's story kind of just fizzles out at the end with just an anti-climax. The mystery unfolds in a very obvious way that's really predictable. Like, pretty early on in the story, you kind of figure out what's going on, but the movie drops these hints about what's happening when I, I, I get it. You'd, and, uh, in addition to that, there are flashbacks throughout the movie that show you stuff that happened at the end, at, at the beginning of the movie that foreshadow what, what what happened. And it just treats the audience like they're idiots, like they don't remember what happened like 40 minutes ago in the movie. It's it's a little it's a little insulting spending like a minute on a flashback to something I pretty I saw pretty recently. I don't have short term memory loss, so that. It's a little disappointing how mystery unfolds. It's it's a little disappointing. Uh, 
But ultimately, the film does have a good environmental message, but it's not preachy about it. It sort of presents itself as the environmental message, but it never has a character that sort of lectures you about proper treatment of the environment. No, you, you just sort of take what's depicted in the movie. You're left with your own chance to have an opinion, but the message is there. And that message is that pollution caused this plague, and the plague is isopods, these these little parasites that get into people's bodies, and the parasites eat these people from the inside out. It's very grisly. And the effects are pretty good, the practical effects at least. They're all executed really well. But then the movie has some CGI shots and it really takes away from the realism because that stuff just looks cartoony. I, I guess they kind of had to resort to CGI to really depict these little bug things crawling all over the place, but it just doesn't look good. And it really bogs down the movie, unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> I was surprised by the end of the movie to find out that it was directed by Academy Award winning director Barry Levinson, who directed Rain Man and Good Morning Vietnam, like really classic films. And it's just a little disappointing because the movie feels really rough around the edges. It doesn't feel polished like it was directed by somebody with a ton of experience. He's directed so many fucking movies. At the end of the day, The Bay is a goofy, fun, but pretty flawed horror film with a decent message. Now, what do you think about the film? Let me know. And it looks like that my camera's about to die. I'm running out of batteries. So if you like the video, like it. Subscribe for more videos. Oh yeah, follow Dr. Wolfula on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Dr. Wolfula. Oh, and support Dr. Wolfula's Patreon. Can't forget about that. Anyway, I've been Goulash. You fucking weirdos.